What's up guys, how's it going? Mike the Tech here, and I just wanted to update you guys on the virtual display driver. There is actually a massive, massive update um, in the next beta, or in the current beta that is out now, and I wanted to kind of talk about it and talk about how this uh, came to be. So first of all, huge shout out to uh, Yaki and Bud. Bud did a ton of work uh, these past few nights and enabled a lot of features that we've been working on and wanted to get working for a very long time. He kind of just went God mode out of nowhere and got a bunch of stuff done. Um, really excited to be able to push these out to the public. And uh, yeah, let's talk about what some of these updates are. You can see we now have hardware cursor support. That was one issue with Parsec where uh, two mouses were sometimes rendered. This will allow you to enable or disable that so that if you're having issues, you can disable it. If uh, you're not having issues, you can enable it. Uh, we now have HDR 10 plus support. What does that mean? That means not only can we use HDR 8-bit, which was the default, but we can also use 10 and 12 as well and set those in the XML file. Next, we have custom EDID support. You can toggle this in the XML and you can use a uh, user underscore EDID bin in the um, folder that you have your driver in and it will read the EDID off of that. Now, this isn't going to pull the resolutions from it. It's going to pull the uh, device information and uh, relevant information that the driver needs to uh, treat it as the same display. Next, you have floating point refresh rates. This has been an update that was uh, in the works for quite some time. Uh, we had a few users submit, so I wanted to kind of give a shout out to Paperman5. He was the first to submit a working solution for fractional refresh rates, but it was a bit hard to get working when you had to enter specific values to get you know, one of the refresh rates that we're used to. You have to actually add some uh, mathematical values to get those actually working. So instead, uh, we ended up integrating floating point refresh rates directly in the XML file so you can type in what refresh rate you specifically need. Perfect. Uh, we updated the file path location. We're no longer an IDD sample driver. We have an updated driver name across the board throughout both code and uh, the driver and app signing itself. So we're no longer using the IDD sample driver. It's no longer a sample. We are in production. Uh, next, this is huge. We've added ARM64 support. And what well, we've, Bud has added ARM64 uh, support. I've been uh, looking into how to build ARM64 uh, versions for some time now. And there was always little bugs here and there. And uh, he managed to get it working and tested on ARM devices. So uh, definitely let us know how that goes. It seems like an amazing feature that opens up to a lot more devices. And then we've added some general small tweaks and bug fixes that um, deal with some of the performance issues with having multiple displays. Uh, we're still working on that, but yeah, thank you so much for um, all the contributions from Bud and Yoki, and I'm excited to hear what you guys think. All right, thank you so much for watching, and hope you have a good day. Peace.